Hello everyone! You can see I have all of these goodies out on my table. Today is the first video in an eight-week series that we are doing and we are creating the stained glass flower puzzle quilt. This is a mystery quilt of sorts and uh, each week we're going to reveal new puzzle pieces. You can see I have week one puzzle pieces right underneath of this sheet. Now if you'd like to get a copy of this sheet I'm going to put a link to the uh, in the description box to the video where you can print this off and really it just tells you all of the fabric requirements that you'll need to gather and some supplies. And today's video being the first video I think is going to be the longest video in the series. We're going to go over all of this stuff and uh, go over colors and uh, I'm going to walk you through the puzzle pieces for this week. So it's going to be exciting. Go grab yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and sit down and just hang out with me, and we're going to have a lot of fun today. So before I reveal the puzzle pieces for this week and we get busy creating, let's go over all of these goodies. You can see I have my freezer paper here. Uh, you can pick that up at Walmart, your grocery store. If you can't find it anywhere, I'll put a link to uh, freezer paper on Amazon. You can order it. It comes right straight to your house. And uh, so there's an option if you can't find that. Let's go over, before we get to all these fabrics, let's go over the glue that we're going to use. Now, I went to Joann's and I had a lot of fun just picking out stuff. This is all optional stuff. I'm mainly going to be using a glue stick and this is an all-purpose glue stick by Elmer's and I think primarily any type of glue stick is going to work for this project. Uh, I tend to stay away from the cheaper glue sticks because the hold is not quite as strong but if you have found a glue stick that holds really strong and you like it then by all means use that glue. Uh, this is not specific for this project. It's just I really like it because the hold is strong. I'm also going to show you when we get to this part how you can use some heat and bond light. This just comes in sheets. You can buy it off the bolt at the quilt store or Walmart. Uh, I'm going to show you that. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I have some of this and I'll show you how I use that if you want to do that. I'm also going to be experimenting with these and these are all just optional. They might make this project a little bit easier. However, if you decide to go this route, I want you to keep in mind the differences in all these products. And uh, let's see. I guess we'll go over that now. I'm thinking I'm getting ahead of myself. But this and this product you can stitch through. Okay, it says right on the back that machine or hand sew as desired. So this is not going to gum up your needle and uh, we'll get to that here shortly. This one here in the red package, it says Ultra Hold is a no sew bonding uh, product. And so if you use this red color, then you will not be doing any sewing with your background pieces. So uh, keep that in mind if you investigate any of these products. I just bought a bunch of them so I could show you, but primarily I'm using a glue stick, okay? And I think I did get ahead of myself a little bit. Now many of you have contacted me about the fabrics that I'm going to use in the quilt and should they be florals, solids, vibrant colors, uh, toned down colors and here is what uh, my answer is. This is your quilt and there are no rules In our quilts you can get away with so much more than you can in your traditional quilts that you make for your bed or um, things of that nature. And so I say you do with your quilt what makes you happy. And you're going to see I have a variety of different fabrics that I've chosen for this quilt. I just went through uh, 
fabrics in my stash. I had a bunch of fat quarters that I purchased when they were on sale that I just stashed away that might work in this uh, quilt. I have some fat quarters that were gifted to me uh, last Mother's Day that I've been saving. And I have fabrics left over from other quilts that I did that were just, you know, extras that I saved. I'm going to use bits and pieces of all of these. So let me show you for my five inch squares, the fabrics that I've chosen. Okay, and we'll go over those. You can see I have a variety of different colors here. I have some bright, uh, bright vibrant oranges and reds and uh, blue colors. I have some browns. I have some pinks and fuchsia and it goes all the way up to brown. Now I thought this would be pretty in my quilt. And you can see I have some batiks. I have some floral prints. There's another batik. I have this crazy funky print. Some floral. I guess that's a floral print. <laughs> I have some striped fabric. Again, some more batiks. These prints. I have some fishy fabric. <laughs> I have some fabric with stones on it and I have this darker uh, blue fabric with some black print. So I'm mixing all of these up and I really think I'm going to like the results of that. You could do all solids. You could do all florals. You could do all tone on tone printed fabric. It is really up to you. And so here since we're going over the backing, the five inch squares, I'm going to show you some pictures here of just a Google search that I did uh, about stained glass. And you can see there's all these different color variations. You know, I just don't think that there's any rules. This first picture of the diamonds set on point have really vibrant pops of color mixed in here and there. And I think that is brilliant. This second picture, this a little stained glass piece I found on Amazon. And isn't that so cute? But you can see they've used almost every color of the rainbow. And it all really goes in really well. This third picture here is really a lot softer. And uh, the colors just sort of go and flow. But it's still very bright. And, but it is a lot softer. So maybe you want to go in some colorways like that. This fourth example that I found, the background glass is all the same. I mean, there's variances in color in each little pane, but it's all the same all the way around the design. So maybe you want to use one particular fabric and do all 48 five inch squares, the same color fabric. I think that would be brilliant. I think that would be beautiful. So really there's no rules. And if you uh, didn't see anything there that inspires you, then just do a Google search of stained glass and find a picture that inspires you in a colorway that you really like. And maybe screenshot that and write down the fabric colors and go from there. So there's a, a good way to get your colorway for your five inch squares. Now for my white fabrics, I have chosen a white on white fabric. So there's a print that's white on a white background. <laughs> you of course could use all solid white. And I've chosen these white based fabrics, but they have different colored prints on them. So I'm totally mixing things up. I call this white. <laughs> <laughs> you might call it something else, but in the overall quilt, it's going to show up as white. Okay. And then for my green fabrics, for my applique, I have a variety of different colored greens. Again, you could use all the same fabric. I think that would be beautiful. However, I'm going to have mine all patchy looking and I'm going to use different shades of green that have different colors in them. So there are my fabrics that I went through and chose. 
So that is my fabric choice. Now I would love to see your fabric choice. If you want to share pictures, uh, I'm going to have my links to Facebook and Etsy. And uh, the Creative Crew group is a really great and easy way to share your pictures. And we'd all love to see them over there. And you can access that group by going to my Lisa Cape and Quilts Facebook page and join in the group. There's a little button you can click and join. And it's very easy to share your pictures there. All right, let's go back and talk about the puzzle base. I have already pre-cut my 30 by 40 inch piece of fabric. Now before I cut this, I did starch and give a good press and so the fabric has a little bit of body to it. It's not completely stiff, but uh, it does have a little bit of body to it. And it's just going to give me a good solid foundation that we are building this puzzle on. Now you can see I went with a dark color because going through my stash, I just picked a piece of fabric that was large enough to cut a piece that's 30 by 40. Now, keep this in mind when you are using your base fabric, that if you are using something dark, it might show through your 5 inch squares. Maybe. Let's take a look. Ah, that doesn't really show through that fabric. So, Keep that in mind when cutting this piece, your puzzle base. Uh, that if you have chosen lighter fabrics as your 5 inch squares, that you might want to use a lighter fabric or a white fabric for your puzzle base. This one I think is going to do just fine in this quilt. So this is already starched, pressed, and cut to 30 by 40. So go ahead and prepare that and get that ready. Let's see. All the other things we're going to cover as we get to them. Like I said, this is going to be the longest video in this eight week series. Just showing you the fabrics and going over some of the supplies. Now let's get on to the moment we've all been waiting for. Here is week one's puzzle pieces. And you can see the first page is always going to have one of your pieces. And then there will be a couple other pages with your pieces on them. This is a PDF. The link to your puzzle pieces is in the description box of this video. It's going to bring you straight over to this listing. And these puzzle pieces cost $1.50. Now, if you want to make this quilt or you want to wait until the very end of this series to make up your mind if you want to play along, this listing will be here forever. And these videos will be up forever. <laughs> and so do not feel like you have to hurry up and obtain your pieces or hurry up and make a decision if you want to play along. Uh, you can certainly wait until the end or get your pieces and then come back and watch the videos in your own time. So there's no hurry and no rush. These are your puzzle pieces. Now in the first video when we went over everything, I said Adobe Reader software will really help in printing your PDF. It is free software. You can find it by Google searching Adobe Reader and it is the PDF Viewer. And in the PDF Viewer you have some couple, a couple of different print settings and you want to make sure to check the actual size when printing your PDF because you want to make sure that this puzzle piece measures exactly 5 inches. So there we are, 5 inches wide and 5 inches tall, just like that. If you use uh, a different software to print off your pattern, make sure to measure your pieces uh, after you've printed them and make sure that they measure exactly 5 inches, okay? Because that's really important to get all of our pieces to play nice with one another. <laughs> Now you'll see uh, on this first page, we have a little grid up here up at the top. The polka, dot, polka dotted uh, pieces are going to be white. So everywhere you see the polka dots, we are cutting these pieces out of white fabric. So in this week's puzzle pieces, we have four pieces. These three pieces will have white 
And this last piece, piece F1, is going to be green. It has the little wavy lines in it. So green fabric, white fabric. Each one of your pieces has a little position that you can reference your map for. So B1 is this piece right here. And this is going to tell you where to put this down on your fabric base. Okay? <laughs> so let's go ahead. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to clear a lot of this out. I'm going to go ahead and cut out the first row of pieces. So there's six pieces in week one. These two solid black pieces. These are going to be your pieces that have no applique in them. Okay, so A1 is a solid 5 inch by 5 inch square with no applique. And E1 is also a 5 inch square piece of fabric with no applique. And these four puzzle pieces are what we're downloading in this week's uh, puzzle pieces. I'm hoping this all makes sense. <laughs> At any time, I jump down to the comment section. I'd be glad to try and help you. Uh, so let's go ahead and pause everything. I'm going to cut my row of pieces. And I think for my quilt, I'm going to decide my five inch squares as I go along. You might want to go ahead and pre-cut all of your 48 pieces and lay them out and sort them and arrange them in a color way that works for you. I'm a little bit of a, a spur of the moment kind of creator. So <laughs> I'm going to pick out my fa my fabrics, cut my squares, and we're going to come back and start creating these puzzle pieces. Okay, I am back from selecting my first row of fabric squares, and I've already cut them to five inches square. So you'll see they're exactly five inches and I've just chosen a different variety of fabrics for my quilt. So at this point you'll have row one, six different five inch squares. Now we're going to start in this position and this position is completely solid. So this fabric, we're not doing anything to. I'm going to go ahead and set that off to the side. And we're going to start with our first puzzle piece for today. And that will be B1. Yay, we're, we're going to get started now. Okay, I have myself a piece of freezer paper. If you've never uh, worked with freezer paper, it has a matte dull side, a paper side that you can write on. And on the other side, it has a plastic coating. And this, when uh, heated with your iron on fabric, fuses the paper to your fabric and uh, works really, really well for doing applique. There's a ton of other uses for freezer paper in your crafting and your sewing and quilting studios, but this is how we're using the freezer paper in this project. I just cut myself off a sheet of that. And I have some white fabrics for my applique and some green because we will have a small little smidgen piece of green at the end. So let's go ahead and start with my B1 fabric square. This is what we're working with. We'll move our little grid out of the way. And this is B1's puzzle piece. All right. Ooh, let's get started. I have just a marker to trace my uh, piece with and this uh, you can pretty much see through the freezer paper pretty well to trace your piece. However, if you have a light box or a light pad uh, or if you hold this up to a window and trace, you might be able to see everything a lot easier. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I mentioned the light box or the light pad or the window is because some of you might have a harder time seeing these pieces. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and trace out exactly our piece for B1. I'm sorry if my hands are in the way. 
we're going to try to get this exactly right. So there's that shape. And then we also want to include the square because that's going to help us line up the piece exactly right on our 5 inch square. My hand shakes, so <laughs> I have to trace this way. All right, there is piece number one, or B1. And what I'm going to do is just do a small little rough cut around this piece, not directly on the line yet. Just like that. And we'll set that off to the side. And I'm going to choose a fabric for B1. And now let's go with this white on white fabric. Now freezer paper, the way we are doing this, all of our images are not mirror imaged. And so we are fusing the freezer paper with the plastic coating directly to the pretty side of our fabric. All right. So just pick a part of your fabric and we're going to fuse that right down to the pretty side. And that just takes a second or two. And now let's rough cut that out so we have a smaller piece to work with. So just like that. And now, once you're at this stage, you can go ahead and cut your piece out directly on the line. And there is our little applique shape. At this point, we still have the freezer paper on the fabric. It's going to help give this piece of fabric some body so that we can work with this fabric. Now I'm going to bring in my glue stick. Where did I put my glue stick? Here it is. Again. <laughs> Let's bring in our square for position B1. Let's move you over a little bit. Now, see how this fabric piece is adjoined right at this bottom edge, and it also is joined right in this bottom corner, right on the edge. That's how we're going to place this fabric piece, just like that. Okay, so uh, while the freezer paper is still on there, it's a lot easier to work with. Let me bring in some scrap. Scraps, scraps, scraps. So that I can put some glue stick onto the back side of this fabric. Now I'm being very generous with my glue and going around all of the raw edge of this piece. Just like this. And just like that, I've glued all the raw edges of my piece, and we can line that back up, just like this, right to that corner and right to the bottom edge, and stick that down. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat set that and dry the glue a lot quicker. You could let it dry all on its own. But I'm just going to heat set that glue and let it dry and bond with the fabric. And then at this point, you can go ahead and remove the freezer paper once it's nice and cooled off from your piece. Just like that. All right, so there is piece B1, and this is what your piece will look like once you followed all the steps. So there is the tiny little edge of our flower. Now we're going to go ahead and set this aside. Let's do the same thing for our next piece. Position C1 is just like this. Now this piece is going to be a little bit more complicated. Let's 
on a piece that I can trace just like this. And remember, the more accurate you are with your tracing, the better all of your pieces are going to fit together. So we have a little white piece just like this. Then we have a separate piece that comes in just like this. A little curvy up at the top. Come back down. A little small curve and we come back down to the line. Straight across on that bottom edge and then this last third piece. Just like this. And where's my marker? There we go. Now because I want my flower to be all scrappy, I'm going to fuse these three pieces all on different white fabrics. Of course you could use all the same. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. Let's see, we're going to want to separate this. That. And this little piece down here. So there's my three pieces for piece C1. We'll set that aside and let me grab my white fabrics. Remember, we're fusing this to the pretty side. So let's make this bigger piece, this white and blue. See how quick that bonds to the fabric? Just like that. And I'm not using any steam, but I am using the highest cotton setting on my iron. We'll do a rough cut. Trying not to waste too much of that fabric. And now we can cut this piece out on the line. Freezer paper is a very cost effective way to do applique. I've done several videos on how to do raw edge applique with freezer paper. Round it up at the end. So there's that first piece, and then we have, let's see, let's bring in this white and green fabric, and we will bond that right there on that edge. that out. Just like this. So there's that other little piece and we have one piece left to go. And let's bring in this white fabric. I call it white. <laughs> you might actually call this blue. Let's see. Let's put him right up in this corner. Fuse it down. Trim it off of there. And then cut out our piece. So there we go. There's our three pieces for C1. So you can see this is fairly simple. Let's bring in our fabric for C1, which is this pretty, pretty purple, and our three pieces. Now, let's go over how to place pieces that are sort of in the center, because this piece will be very easy to put in. 
and this piece will be very easy to put in because we're just lining up to the edges. So let's get those in place first. Let's see, this bigger piece goes right in this corner. So I'm just applying a generous amount of glue right on that raw edge. So everything will stick down. That's one of the reasons why the glue stick, see that little thread? <laughs> the glue stick sort of gets on my nerves because it pulls at the raw edge. But we can always trim those little threads off. We're going to go ahead and line that up right to the edge and right to the bottom edge and stick that down. And then this smaller piece here goes just like that. Let's glue the back side of this piece. And we will stick this down right in this corner. Just like that. Let's go ahead and fuse those two pieces so they're dry and we can move this around and those pieces are not going to go anywhere. And that just takes a second. We'll let it cool off. Then this paper back and peel off the freezer paper. Oh, the static, everything's clinging to me. And peel this off, just like that. So there's two pieces of our flower. And now we're ready to glue this piece in. So here's one of the ways that you could do this to make sure that everything lines up. You can take your 5 inch square and place it directly over top of your puzzle piece. And if it helps, Let's just take a marker and right where this piece comes in, let's just make a mark there and right where this piece meets the line, let's make a mark there. Now this is a way that you could do it without using a light box or a light pad. I of course have one of those new light pads that I showed in one of my videos and I was using my daughter's and then I loved it so much I ordered one for myself and so that came in last week. <laughs> So you could definitely place this on a light pad and then you can see through your fabric piece and align up your pieces very easily that way. This way we're going to do it without a light pad so that you can see because you don't have to have one. So this is a way you could line up your pieces so that they're placed exactly where they need to be. So we have our 5 inch square right in place. I've made a mark where these two pieces should line up. Let's go ahead and glue up this piece. Generous with the glue because we're going to be working with this quilt for quite a while. Just like this and like that. Ooh, I'm getting glue everywhere. <laughs> now you can see those tiny little marks. I'm going to bring this piece in just like that and align it right up with those little marks just like, oops, let's try not to shift this around, Lisa. Let's see, something that'll hold that right in place so it doesn't move. There we go. Because I have shaky hands. <laughs> so we're lining that piece right up along that bottom edge with our little marks. And that's going to give us an accurate placement. Ooh, I was a little too generous with the glue. All right, so there's our piece lined up exactly right. Let's go ahead and fuse that glue and dry it really quick. So we can take off the freezer paper and reveal this piece. 
let it dry for a second. I have glue all over my fingers. <laughs> Let's peel off that freezer paper. And sometimes the freezer paper does peel off uh, easier if your fabric is still warm. So there is that piece. All right, so let's just do a sneak peek of what this is going to look like when we line up our pieces. So there is B1 and here is C1. And you can see this flower petal joins right there. So isn't that exciting? <laughs> okay, let's move on to D1. So this is my fabric for D1. You might hear the wind chimes hitting my little studio on the outside. It's a little windy today. Let's bring in our puzzle piece for D1. And our freezer paper. And we're just going to trace that same way we did with the other pieces. Just like this. Oh, my tummy is grumbling. It is about lunchtime. All right, there's my piece for D1. And while we are tracing, let's go ahead and trace the piece for F1 as well. And we might as well since we have the freezer paper here. So F1 is two little small pieces. And this is the green fabric. It has the little wavy lines. So there's one and another piece just like that and it meets up along this bottom edge. All right, so there's the rest of our pieces. Now I can set the freezer paper off to the side for good for this week. All right, and now well, we can separate these just like this. I think I will speed up parts of this process in the next uh, videos to follow, but I wanted to walk you through step by step uh, to make sure that you really get the process in this first video. All right, so we're working with D1 fabric and that is white. Let's bring in that white on white fabric again. And I will fuse that right into place the best way not to waste so much. Fusing that down. And getting rid of the extra and now our first piece of green which goes in the square D1. Let's use this really bright green just like that. I'll fuse that right up in the corner. Just like that. And now we can cut these pieces out. Right on the line. Just like this is a small little tiny sliver. There's our little tiny piece. <laughs> and there's our other piece. And now let's cut out this bigger piece of white. So I'm really excited if you are following along. I would love to see this week's uh, this week's pictures if you want to share them with me. Sorry, I have a hard time multitasking, cutting and talking at the same time. <laughs> All right, let's bring in our map 
and we are on D1. So this is the fabric I'm going to use for D. And this one is very easy to line up. It lines up right in this bottom left-hand corner. Let me go ahead and get some glue on this piece. Whoops. Pulled it away from the freezer paper a little bit. You could use wet glue. That's my favorite glue to use. However, reading all the comments in my earlier videos, most people like to use the glue stick. And so that's what we're going to use in this series. Now we're just lining this piece up directly with the left edge and bottom edge. Just like that. And we'll fuse that dry. And that just takes a second. So you can see, once you get the gist of how to put your pieces together, you'll be able to go through these pieces pretty quickly and do each week relatively fast. See how perfect that is? All right, let's set that aside. In D1. Oh, no, we just did D1. Now we are on to F1, and that is green. So my fabric for F, we're skipping E's fabric. E will be a blank solid square. And our fabric for F is just like this. Now, this is one of the other tricky placements, and so you can either use your light box or you can make yourself some registration marks so that you can line up your piece. And you can see that I just made myself some little registration marks just like that and that's going to help us place our little tiny pieces. So we'll bring in fabric F and line that up onto our square just like that. I want something that's really going to hold that into place so I don't move it around with my shaky fingers. <laughs> now we have our little registration marks. And we can glue. We're going to glue right on this paper. Just like this. that. I'm lifting up my freezer paper with the glue. <laughs> now we can use our registration marks to give us a placement. So right in there. Is that going the right way? Yep. And this little tiny sliver of a piece. Just like that. which might be easier if you don't have glue all over your fingers. We're going to line that up with the registration marks and place it down just like that. Oh, I might have cut my pieces a little wonky. They should be closer together up at the top. There. Now we're going to go ahead and heat set that. And then we can remove our freezer paper. Let that dry for a second. Put the lid on this glue so it doesn't dry up. Peeling off the freezer paper reveals our fabric underneath. Which might not have glued that bottom down very well. Lift off. There we go. And there is our first green fabric. And this is for F1. Alright, so if you're totally confused by now, it's okay. I'm going to show you. Although, 
I don't know if all of this is going to fit in this seam, in this close up. Here is F1 and E1. So there's an empty space just like that. And then we have, you see the E, um, F, E, D, C, just like that. See how perfectly that lines up? Of course, I have all my tools in the way. And then we have B, which lines up there. And we are starting to reveal the top of our flower and a tall, uh, a small little tiny bit of a green leaf here. So now we have all of these pieces. What we're going to do now is move over to the sewing machine. So grab yourself some tearaway stabilizer. Grab yourself some thread. And uh, we're going to sit at the sewing machine. I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. Because we're going to go ahead and do a satin stitch around all of our pieces at this point. And this will be so easy because we're only working with 5 inch squares which are very easy to move around in any size throat space of your machine. So if you uh, don't have a tearaway stabilizer like Stable Stitch, grab yourself some coffee filters or some phone book pages. Those work really great. We're going to use those underneath of this piece of fabric so that we can do a satin stitch and it'll prevent any skip stitches or puckering around our applique pieces. All of that tears away when we're done. And let's see, thread color, I'm going to use black because in all those pictures I showed at the beginning of this video with stained glass, it's all separated with black, I believe it's called leading. Uh, and so that's what we're going to use around, or I'm going to use around all of my pieces. Again, this is your quilt, your art masterpiece. And so you can choose any color thread that you want to use. I plan on using black around all of my applique pieces. So let me go ahead and wind a bobbin with black thread and thread my machine. And I'm going to walk you through doing a satin stitch on all of these pieces. Now we can start having some fun with the sewing machine. <laughs> all right. So here's a coffee filter. We're going to use this as a tearaway stabilizer. Uh, very cost effective way to accomplish the task of stabilizing our fabrics. What I did is I just pressed a good stack of them nice and flat. And I plan on using two because the coffee filters are very, very thin. So I'm going to use two as a good solid foundation. Uh, stabilizer for each one of our pieces just like this all right and it will remove off of the back of your fabric very easy and i'll show you that when we get to that point so we're going to use a satin stitch and i highly recommend sitting down with your machine and some scraps go ahead and use a piece of coffee filter behind your scraps so you can see how your thread is going to act um, as you select your settings for your satin stitch. I went through and adjusted my satin stitch. You can see it was very loose up here at the top. And I stitched down and adjusted the width and my length until I found a, a nice solid width that I wanted to use, just like that. And you might have to adjust, adjust your tension and loosen the tension so that your stitch doesn't pull your top thread or your bobbin thread up to the top and it will give you a much prettier stitch. And then once you have all of your settings exactly the way you want them, go ahead and write down everything that you're using for your satin stitch. So for this stitch here, my width is a 3.6 and my length is a 0.2. Now that could vary on your machine and maybe you want your stitches to be wider and maybe you want them to be more narrow. I don't want to forget once I have found this stitch that I really like because this is going to be an eight week process. 
I want to use the same stitch, so I'm writing that down on my puzzle pieces so I don't forget where to set my machine once I have found the stitch that I really like. So now we're ready to start sewing. I have my first piece. I have two coffee filters just laying right underneath of them, like that. Now, when we are stitching, and I'm going to do this first piece with you in real time, and then I'm going to bring you through stitching these other pieces, but we're going to speed up that part of the video because I think this first video is really going to be long anyways. So we'll speed that up. When we're stitching out our pieces, remember any, piece, any part of your applique that falls along the outside perimeter of your square, we are not stitching. We are only doing a satin stitch on our applique pieces that fall within the inside of our square. So this edge and this edge on this piece will not get a satin stitch. Let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to start a little bit off of the freezer paper, off of the fabric, and start my satin stitch. I guess it would help <laughs> if my needle was threaded. There we go. I'm going to come in right there. There we go. All right, I have it started. I'm going to go ahead and do a satin stitch along this edge of our applique piece. Is our satin stitch around our piece. I'm hoping you can see that fairly well. A solid line of stitching all the way around and now we can just simply tear off this coffee filter. Like that. And then remove this inner piece. like that. And we'll trim off these little strings. And there is our applique piece. And I believe this was B1. Alright, I'm going to pause the video and we will stitch out the other pieces together, but I'm going to speed that process up so we are not here for two days. <laughs> now this part of the video is going to be about four minutes long. I wanted to go ahead and film it because I do have a lot of new quilters who might want to sit and watch this process just so that they can see exactly how I stitch out all of the pieces. They might feel more comfortable stitching out their own pieces after seeing each one of my pieces being stitched. 
if you totally understand this part and you're ready to move on and see how we connect these puzzle pieces to our fabric base, you can go ahead and skip about four minutes and we'll see you after all my pieces are stitched. Now we are all done with this week's pieces. So you can see I gave my pieces a quick press. If you press your pieces, make sure you're not ironing and stretching out your five inch square that you are just pressing everything nice and flat and not distorting the shape of your square. Then you can go ahead and trim all of your threads that hang over the edge, making sure not to cut your actual fabric piece that you're just cutting off any of the threads. I went ahead and did that for all of my pieces and so they're all nice and tidied up and pretty. I might have some strings here and there. <laughs> and now I am ready to adhere these to our puzzle base. Alright, so you remember the puzzle base that we cut to 30 inches wide and 40 inches long. Go ahead and grab that and I'm going to show you how we attach our puzzle pieces to our fabric base. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can do this. You of course can use a glue stick and that's how we'll do 
position A1, and that's this solid piece of uh, square fabric. And then I'm going to show you how you can use heat and bond light. This is the regular heat and bond light that comes on the bolt that I went ahead and cut some strips. And then I cut my strips down to five inches long. So these are the same length and width of our squares. So there's some heat and bond light. And then throughout this quilt process, I might investigate some of these other products because I have not tried them. And I've always wanted to give these a try. But this is a lightweight, two-sided, pressure-sensitive fusible tape. So that might work really well. And this is the same thing except they're different widths. Like one is really skinny and one is a little bit wider. And then this is a heat and bond soft stretch, which is a heat and bond light. You can stitch through this. It's not going to gum up your needle. And that is already cut into a uh, tape that's made for you. So <laughs> you don't have to go through the process of cutting little strips. It's already cut for you. And this is a an option if you don't want to do any quilting on your art quilt once you're done. Okay, these other projects are going to allow us to stitch down our pieces at the very end and quilt our quilt. You could use this, but I would recommend only using the Ultra Hold if you do not plan on doing any stitching of your pieces. Okay, that's pretty important because I've tried to stitch through this and my thread would either break or I, I would have issues. So only use this if you're not quilting your quilt at the very end. All right, so let's set these aside. Let's set my little pre-made heat and bond light strips to the side. And I'm going to show you with a glue stick first because really that's all you really need if you have a glue stick that holds uh, really strong and will keep your pieces in place throughout the rest of the quilt. You don't need all the other stuff and that's why I said it was, it was optional. Let's go ahead and take our fabric puzzle base and we're going to just put this on our pressing board and we're going to take piece number A1 which was a solid piece of fabric. Can you see that? So let's see, I'm in the frame. What we're going to do is we're going to glue this to the edge of our puzzle base and that's why I said <laughs> This art quilt is going to break some rules. We're not actually sewing these pieces together like this. We are gluing them to our puzzle base. So yes, we're breaking some quilting rules in this quilt. I'm just going to bring over something I can glue this piece without getting glue everywhere. These coffee filters work great for all kinds of uh, ways that you want to use them in your studio. <laughs> now I'm going to go through and I'm going to be very generous with the glue all the way around the raw edge of this five inch square, making sure that every bit of it has glue. And I'm even going to run some glue through the center of my square. Now we're going to place the raw edges of our square up to the raw edges of our puzzle base. And we're going to make sure it's all nice and very straight and square right in this top left hand corner. Just like this, you can go ahead and flatten it out. Make sure it's nice and smooth. There's no wrinkles. It's exactly square along this edge. Then we can dry the glue and make sure that's not going anywhere. Now this should be a strong enough hold that we're going to work with assembling the rest of this quilt and this piece should not go anywhere. And I've done some testing. So let me bring over my test piece. Last week I took some smaller squares 
and in this top row I used a glue stick to glue them down into place and then I used some heat and bond strips that I pre-cut just like this the heat and bond light and I put these squares down and I let them sit for a day and then I came back and before I stitched anything down I really worked the quilt to see if anything popped loose the heat and bond light did hold these pieces down a little bit stronger and a little bit more secure than the glue stick but the glue stick worked fine too now see how I came through and did a zigzag stitch that's what we're going to do at the very end once our quilt is layered with the batting and that's going to forever securely put all of these pieces into place and it's going to quilt our quilt at the same time so that's what we're going to do at the very end in eight weeks we're going to do this little top stitch just like this at the very end so I did test it out the glue stick will hold it if you want to use the glue but if you have a, an abundance of heat and bond light <laughs> and you want to make yourself some little strips like this make sure I'm focused here uh, you can go ahead and do that too and so if you have a bunch of them already pre-cut it doesn't really add a lot of time you can take your piece and flip it to the uh, back side of your fabric you can line up a strip of this homemade heat and bond light tape now the only thing I would suggest about this is you want to make sure that none of the adhesive goes beyond your fabric square because we're going to do some pressing on pieces around this and we don't want to get any of this on the surface of our iron so go ahead and align that to the edge of your fabric just bond that really quickly to your fabric and I'll do this uh, opposite side so this is just an option if you wanted to go in this direction but you can see that the glue stick is probably a lot faster <laughs> you do want to make sure that this is right up to the edge of your fabric just like this and of course when I'm doing this and I'm not making a video it all works so much easier and doesn't take quite as long that's how it goes you're just heating that up long enough for the adhesive to bond with the fabric and then I will remove these first two pieces and you see that shiny adhesive that is left on there just like that and now we can apply the heat and bond to these other two sides like this like that I cut all my pieces a little bit too long like this and then like that this time I'm going to be very careful and just press right here in the center and not get the tip of my iron on the raw exposed adhesive <laughs> like that so this is an option if you are worried about your glue stick not holding all your pieces but it might be a little bit more timely our time involved like that now of course if you don't want to do any quilting on your quilt at the end if you don't want to do any of this top stitching use the ultra bond the heat and bond in the right in the red package now I'm going to pull this heat and bond right from the center 
and it's going to stay to my fabric even after not ironing the corners. Just make sure that is in the right place. And then we can simply fuse this right into place. Oh, that is the wrong piece, Lisa. We're doing B1. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's been a long day. Let me go ahead and glue stick B1 since that seems to not take as long. So now we're working on B1. Glue sticking, glue sticking. See, that's my only issue with a glue stick. Is it tends to pull at your raw edges. But you can always trim that up and make it nice and pretty. All right. Here comes position B1. We're lining that up right next to A1 and right along this top. We're making sure not to push it out of square and that everything is nice and straight. There we go. Now see how fast that was with the glue stick? <laughs> and that's really one of the reasons why I said the heat and bond was optional. Because just like that, we added our puzzle piece with the glue stick. Now we can bring in the piece that we put the heat and bond light on the back side of. We're just going to scoot this over a little bit. Now we can line up this piece to the top of our quilt and over to the edge. Now, one thing that you might notice, and it, you might be too far away, is that anytime you're doing a satin stitch, you do tend to draw the fabric in a little bit around your applique. This might cause a little bit of a separation in between your pieces, and really, that's okay. That's one of the reasons why I like the darker base, is because it's all going to pretty much blend in, especially after we do a little zigzag or top stitch around these pieces, you're not so much going to see that small little sliver of space. But that really happens when you do the satin stitch and it sort of draws in your fabric a little bit. So that is okay. We're going to go ahead and press that into place. And remember this piece has the heat and bond light. And we're just going to use that as a demonstration on how you can use something different than the glue stick. It certainly is not any faster. <laughs> so let's go ahead and add, let's see, A, B, C, D. This is piece D1. So certainly, <laughs> I do not blame you if you have fast forwarded to this part because this first video is going to be much longer than the rest of them. Next week, I will reveal the puzzle pieces and I will walk you through the steps just like we did this week, except I will probably fast forward everything so you get the idea and then stitch them out and we'll fast forward that part as well and then we'll add our pieces and really that's how the rest of this series is going to go and we will reveal the quilt each week as we add our new pieces just like this bring it up a tiny little bit like that Put it right into place, 
like that and fuse it into place. Now, here's a suggestion. If you are putting your pieces down and you notice that they don't exactly line up right here and right here, or maybe you started stitching like I did into the fabric square and you have a little tiny space in your stitching right there, you can always bring this piece over and do a satin stitch right over top of that and blend it right in. You can see this one, the heat and bond, I did not bond down long enough. <laughs> see all the things that can technically go wrong when you're doing a video. Bonding, bonding, bonding. I think maybe because it has a couple layers of fabric that I just did not press that long enough. Alright, we're going to add piece E1 and we're done with the heat and bond for a little while. E1 is a completely blank square of fabric. Make sure I'm gluing the right side here. We're going to glue the edges. Glue the edges, add a little bit of glue in the center, and then line up our piece. There we go. Flatten that out, and then give it a quick press. Got a little bit of heat and bond stuck to my iron anyways. <laughs> now we're on to our last piece, which is F1. It's got the little bit of tiny green leaf in it. I hope you have enjoyed this process so far. As you can see, it a little bit non-traditional the way we're joining our pieces but I've seen art quilts made all kinds of ways I've seen uh, this one person she puts her pieces onto a base using Aileen's tacky glue and she quilts right over it when it's dry and I think her quilts are amazing so if this quilt sparks any interest I highly suggest doing some searches on YouTube for art quilts. They are a great way to break up the monotony of doing a larger quilt project. And this piece shrunk just a little bit when I was doing the satin stitch. But yes, they're a great way to break up larger projects that we're working on. But yet still be creative. I'm going to try the glue on this piece. And there we go. There is week one's puzzle pieces. And the top of our flower just like that. And it hardly all fits into the camera. <laughs> so there is our stained glass flower. And uh, if you have any questions, I would love to try and help. You can comment down in the comment section below or join me on Facebook. Again, the links are in the description box below. The puzzle pieces, the link for that, are in the description box below. I've had a ton of fun today. I think I'm going to go ahead and start working on next week's puzzle pieces. And I look forward to a much shorter uh, video. Uh, I love spending time with you, but I know you just want to get straight to work. And so, yes, the videos from now on will be much shorter. And uh, 
and the, I cannot wait to start revealing this quilt to you. Thank you so much for watching. If you have not already subscribed, hit the little subscribe button and the little bell notification and you'll get notified when I post the pieces for next week. And, uh, and you can follow along. Have a terrific rest of your week. I can't wait to see your pictures. See you next Wednesday.